Bonjour tout le monde. Good morning. I'd like to begin today by recognizing that this is National Nurses Week. Nurses are the heart and soul of our healthcare system. Every day they do incredible work to keep Canadians healthy, and the way they've stepped up to support people during this pandemic speaks to their compassion, resilience, and dedication. To all the nurses out there, thank you so much for going above and beyond, not just these days, but every day. Je vais commencer ce matin en soulignant la Semaine nationale des soins infirmiers. Les infirmières sont au cœur de notre système de santé. Tous les jours, elles font un travail extraordinaire pour nous garder en santé. Et la façon dont elles appuient les gens durant cette pandémie témoigne de leur compassion, de leur résilience et de leur dévouement. À tous les infirmières et infirmiers, merci pour tout ce que vous faites, pas juste ces jours-ci, mais à tous les jours. Since the beginning, our response to the COVID-19 pandemic has been driven by three fundamental objectives. The first is to keep Canadians safe and ensure we take every possible step to protect our most vulnerable citizens. This work continues daily, guided by our best doctors and medical experts, and it drives every move we make. The second is to protect individuals workers, and families from the worst Im financial impacts of this pandemic, so you can put food on the table and cover your bills while staying safe. We're doing that with programs such as the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, the increase in the Canada Child Benefit this month, and the enhanced GST tax credit, among other measures. And thirdly, we are helping Canadian businesses through this extraordinary time including for-profit, not-for-profit, and charitable enterprises to ensure that workers across Canada can keep their jobs so we can come roaring back after this difficult time is behind us. Aujourd'hui, j'annonce la prochaine phase de nos mesures de soutien pour les entreprises qui, collectivement, emploient des millions de Canadiens et qui ont subi des pertes sans précédent à cause de la pandémie. On va élargir la portée du programme de crédit aux entreprises qui a été créé pour que les petites entreprises restent en bonne santé financière, de façon à inclure les moyennes entreprises qui ont besoin de plus de capital. Exportation et Développement Canada et la Banque de développement du Canada vont travailler avec les prêteurs du secteur privé pour accroître l'accès aux capitaux de plusieurs dizaines de millions de dollars pour les entreprises canadiennes de tous les secteurs de l'industrie et de toutes les régions du pays. On va aussi mettre en place le crédit d'urgence pour les grands employeurs pour aider les plus grosses compagnies qui ne peuvent pas obtenir des, de fonds par d'autres moyens à traverser la crise. Mais je veux être clair. Il s'agit d'un financement de transition, pas d'un chèque en blanc. On accorde du soutien aux plus gros employeurs pour protéger des millions d'emplois à travers le pays. Notre approche est fondée sur plusieurs principes de base. Premièrement, on veut éviter que les entreprises fassent faillite. L'objectif du crédit aux entreprises n'est pas de financer des entreprises non rentables ou d'entreprendre une restructuration. On n'a pas l'intention non plus de fournir des prêts à faible taux d'intérêt aux entreprises qui n'en ont pas besoin. Deuxièmement, on va être équitable. Le financement sera accessible à tous les secteurs dans l'ensemble des provinces et des territoires. Et troisièmement, on va protéger les emplois des gens. C'est ça le plus important. Les entreprises qui recevront cette aide devront prendre et respecter certains engagements. Par exemple, maintenir les emplois et leurs investissements, respecter les conventions collectives et les obligations relatives au régime de retraite et prendre des engagements en matière de l'environnement. Plus précisément, il y aura des limites fermes pour les dividendes, les rachats d'actions et la rémunération des dirigeants. Pour contrer l'évitement fiscal et l'évasion fiscale, les entreprises devront partager avec nous leur structure financière complète lorsqu'elles présentent une demande pour obtenir du financement. Today, 
I am announcing the next phase of our support for enterprises that collectively employ millions of Canadians and are experiencing unprecedented losses due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We are expanding the business credit availability program put in place to keep small businesses solvent to mid-sized companies with a greater need for capital. Export Development Canada and the Business Development Bank of Canada will work with private sector lenders to free up access to capital in the tens of millions for Canadian companies in every industry and in all regions across Canada. At the same time, we are establishing a large employer emergency financing facility to provide bridge financing for our largest employers if they are unable to obtain financing through other means. But let me be clear, these are bridge loans, not bailouts. Just as we are finding ways to support small and medium-sized businesses, we'll provide loans to the largest enterprises to help them weather the storm and protect the millions of jobs they provide across Canada. In providing this support, we will be guided by several basic principles. The first is to avoid bankruptcies. Our purpose is to keep large Canadian companies on their feet and protect the millions of jobs they provide. The goal here is not to fix pre-existing insolvencies or restructurings, nor is it to provide low-cost lending to companies that don't need it. Second, we will be fair. Financing will be accessible to every industry sector in a way that is consistent in every province and territory right across Canada. And critically, we will protect workers and hold companies accountable. This is fundamental. Any company that receives this support will be expected to make and keep certain commitments. Those include maintaining jobs and investment, respecting collective agreements and pension obligations, and environmental and climate commitments. In particular, there will be strict limits on dividends, share buybacks, and executive compensation. To stand strong against tax avoidance and tax evasion, we will require companies to share with us their complete financial structure as they apply for funding. With this program, we're taking a bold step. Ideally, private sector lenders are adequate for the needs of large businesses. But in an extraordinary situation when that isn't always enough, we must act to prevent massive harm to Canadian workers and families and the Canadian economy. We will not allow millions of people to lose their livelihoods because of unprecedented events beyond their control. Finally, as we continue to work on plans to reopen, I want to say this. Please let caution and medical advice be your guides. We are all anxious to see life go back to something that looks more like normal. But we're not out of the woods yet, and we cannot squander the sacrifices we've made over the past two months. So when in doubt, if you can, stay home. Avoid gatherings. Wash your hands frequently and thoroughly and maintain two meters distance from everyone else. This is how we will keep fellow Canadians who can't stay home and those working on the front lines safe.